Hi everyone, when it comes to 3D using text to 3D models in the AI arena, there hasn't been too much excitement yet. But lately, once again, Stability AI generated a new model in collaboration with Tripo 3D and they created something called Tripo SR. This model generates 3D models from a 2D image within seconds. In this video, we're going to go over the text to 3D and the image to 3D models and see if it really stands up to the test of creating high quality 3D models. Let's go. So we're going to start with the Stability AI website and there we have the announcement introducing Tripo SR, fast 3D object generation from single images. Basically, what Stability AI introduced here is a model that can take one image, one 2D image, and project it into a 3D model. And here we can see some examples for images, how it generated them as a 3D model. You can see that it already adds the texturing. And one of the strong features here is that it actually completes and generates the texture even in the areas that are not seen in the image. So you can see that backside of the robot is also textured and the other side of the horse is also textured and the officer's uniform and things like that. They give you here some information about the performance of the model, but their claim is that the model can generate models in eight seconds. Later on, we'll check it out in the website and we'll see if it really is that fast. So here there is some comparison between other models and one of the strongest features presented here. If you look at other models, you can see that there, is, that there are a lot of gaps. You can't actually use the model. Unlike that, Triple SR generates a full model with full wireframe. We will see it later on on Blender. And you can actually use this model as is. I won't say that the results are amazing, but it is a usable model. And if you want to read further more, you have the research paper uh, about it. But we're going uh, straight to the Triple AI website and we're going to take a look how it performs. And once we get to their website, immediately we can see some examples of model generated. And the beautiful thing about these models is the fact that the wireframe is complete. If you look once again on the on the object itself, you see that there are no holes in the mesh and it's a complete mesh. Later on, we'll generate a model, we will import it into Blender and we'll take a look if indeed it's a usable mesh and it's something that we can already use as a 3D object. So let's just click generate for free. Once you click generate for free, it will probably ask you to log in. I'm already logged in and you will see here that there are three plans. The basic gives you 10 models per month, with it, which is quite generous. And you have the professional and the premium models for people who want to use it a bit more. Already here you can see there are uh, some examples made by the community. And clicking uh, an object will open it up in a 3D viewer. Once it's opened, you can actually rotate the, the model and look at it from all sides and all directions. I gotta say that the texturing looks very nice it's very high quality it's not a production level quality it's not something you can use in a in a movie or something like that but nevertheless it looks beautiful and if this is the quality of the images being generated i think it is very usable at least as a reference or as a starting point for a more high quality object so we're going to generate an object using the text to 3D and using the image to 3D. <clears throat> let's start with the text to 3D. Let's just type robot with antenna on the top. Let's see what it gives you. Please note that once you are typing, it already gives you things that are similar to what you were typing. It can save a lot of time if you're looking for a specific model, you can simply uh, reuse a model, but of course, we're going to create our own and here we're going to click on draft. Draft basically generates a model very quickly. And once it is done, you can choose this draft and make it a high quality image. So we will wait a few seconds until the draft is done. So it took around 20 seconds for four models to be generated. The first model is this small little fella, which actually I, I kind of like it. I really like it. 
and we have here a robot you can see that the, the model actually looks very good you can you can see it all around uh, and indeed we have a robot with antennas this one didn't have any antennas um but i really like it i really like this little fella and now let's do a more simpler object let's try something like a desk with a laptop on it and see how it does so it completed the models you can see here that it only generated a laptop a laptop and a mouse and just a laptop and only in one case it actually managed to generate a table with an actual laptop on it uh, you can see it in full screen it did a very nice job although if you look from the side you will see that it seems that the laptop is embedded inside the table which is not what we like I'm not sure I like these results, but let's try and check the thing that Stability AI announced, which is the image to 3D. So we will click the image to 3D, and here we need to upload an image. It is advised to upload an image that doesn't have a background. In order to do that, let's open up MidJourney and generate some reference image. So of course, you don't have to use MidJourney. You can use whatever text to image engine you like or you can also use your own image of course and here we were going to create a cute little creature with big eyes and purple fur let's see what it's going to give us we'll say that we want a reference for 3d modeling this usually generates a character with no background or black background so Mid Journey generated the four images, but as you can see, the background is not really what we need. We need this one is with a clear background, but we, we don't really see the creature. I really like this image. We can try and see what happens if we plug it into the uh, image to 3D model. We'll check it out later. But for now, let's just generate the same prompt. And this time we'll add no background or we'll just type white background it would probably work better so you can see now we generated four excellent images i really am intrigued how it will handle the fur because creating fur for a 3d object is quite a complex task and i want to create another creature but this time it's going to be a cute little mouse 3d reference for uh, reference for 3d modeling white background i keep messing up the word background i'm not sure why okay so i actually had to run it again this time i added the word front because on the first run it gave me very nice images but none of them was on the front and i guess and assumed that the best practice is to use a front image in order for the AI to be able to manipulate or to understand the image that we're feeding it. I think I'm going to go with this little fella. He's very cute. So let's take these images and go back to Triple 3D to see how it handles these images. So we're back here. Just before that, I also wanted to do one last test and uh, a planks box, a, a wooden box made of planks and let's give it a run so as you can see it generated four drafts of objects and once we have one that we like let's say for example this one which looks very nice you simply have to select it and click generate this will actually take it to the my model sections and there it will generate a high quality version of the object without any holes or missing uh, polygons in case there were any and while it's generating the models generating a high quality model takes around 10 minutes uh, while it generates it let's just upload an image and create what we wanted to create before i selected these images uh, we will upload this little mouse And we will click draft. We'll give it a few seconds to generate the draft. 
eventually I took the image of uh, the mouse not in the front because with the image in the front it couldn't generate the shape of the head correctly and it appears that once you take it with, uh, with um, 45 degrees it understands the angles of the body shape better. Uh, so that's something good to know if you want to make sure that the depth and the shape of the body is more accurate. And once we like the image, we will simply click generate and it will take it to generate a high quality model. And we've done the same with this image, which is an image I created in the same way using Midjourney. And now we'll go to my models and there you will see the high quality objects being generated. I already pre-created them. To save time and here you can see once I click the image it will show me the high quality object that was generated and you can see that this is a much higher quality texture and the model is smoother and if there were any holes in the mesh the high quality object fixes them and once we like the object we simply click download the same goes for the other models and we will simply click download and we will open up blender to see if the objects are actually usable okay so i'm using blender version 4 uh, 4.0.2 to be exact this is the last stable release of blender uh, it is probable that by the time you're seeing this video the version is higher uh, nevertheless it should work the same there shouldn't be any issue uh, with the steps we're taking here. I'm going with general and I'm going to select everything and delete because we don't really care about the default box. And here we're going to file and we will click import. Now Tripo is exporting a GLB file. If you go to Blender to file import, you will see here that you have a GLB format. So we'll just click it and we'll go to the downloaded folder and we have several models. Let's start with the model that I've shown you before of the cartoon girl. Once you open it up, you can see it here. You can see that the model is complete. There are no holes in the model, which is in the mesh, which is pretty good because it means that you can take this model and you can actually start shaping it using sculpting or you can retopologize the model, meaning that you can reconstruct it based on the overall shape. If you look at the wireframe, you can see all the all the dots that and lines that generate the shapes themselves. It looks very nice, very smooth. And if we'll go to a render view, you will actually see it with the textures. Let's just turn on the light here, the general light. And you can see it actually generated a very nice model that you can eventually use. If, if it's a static model, you can actually use it something like the crates let's let's open up the crates so you can see the crate that we generated before now the texture is much higher in quality you can actually see the texture of the wood unlike the draft that we generated before i think it got out very nice a very nice model so we're going to download it and once again we will download this little creature that we created we'll take a look can see once again it generated a very nice model if you remember in the in the previous draft we had some holes in the mesh and this time there are no holes in the mesh this is a complete mesh meaning that you can actually use it inside the 3d software to sculpt it as a base for sculpting so we will download all the models yeah. And we'll get back to Blender. And this time let's open the mouse with a brown nose. Nose, So it's very nice. Uh, you see that it created some spheres inside the mesh, which is kind of a glitch, I guess. But looking at the external part of the mesh, it looks very nice, very, very smooth. Let's check out the other meshes, the other objects. So looking at the wooden box, this is actually uh, a model that you can use as is if you want to generate uh, several um, uh, several boxes and things like that. I guess you, you, you can create it quite easily, create variations of several models. Uh, it saves quite some time when it comes to generating a more realistic 
models. It looks very nice with the textures. Purple furry creature. And also here you can see the generated model is very nice. The texture is very nice. Very high quality texture. And you can actually take it into the sculpting. If I go to the sculpting mode, you can see that you can actually sculpt on it, meaning that the mesh is completely closed and there are no issues. Uh, you can, I'm not going to get into all the how to do it, but you can remesh the model. So looking at the mesh like that, you can see there are a lot of uh, triangular shapes. You can actually remesh it and it will uh, make it a bit more ordered, a bit more nice. You can lower the resolution a bit and you can see that you have a very nice model to play with. So I think that it's not enough to use it as is when it comes to more um, organic shapes. Uh, but if you want to generate things that are static, like crates uh, and things that can be used um, as a background, not something that you're going to be zoomed in and does not require a lot of details. I think it's an amazing tool and it can save you tons of hours of generating um, objects. For example, if you want some trees, I can assume that many trees uh, have been generated and you can click, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an oak tree. And I will guess that once you click the draft, for purposes of background objects, for example, for visualizations of architecture and things like that. So all in all, I think we are heading in the right direction uh, when it comes to a more organic or a more complex shapes. I guess it is something that will require more job, but it will give you a very nice basis, a very nice start position that will probably save you several hours of work. So that's about it when it comes to 3D today. Of course, I assume that in the following weeks, the technologies will improve, improve and improve, and we will see much better tools that will eventually be able to generate an actual full usable 3D complex models, just like the advancements in the text to image and the advancements that we're seeing every week in the text to video. I can't wait to put my hands on, an, on a high quality text to 3D models. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe. See you on the next one.